Hey guys, Jessica here. So today I'm going to be reviewing the Chase Sapphire Preferred credit card. And I'm super excited to be doing this card because there's some really interesting strategies for how you optimize rewards here. So we actually made a video about this card last year. Um, I'll link to that up here. But basically the promotion that we talked about in that video uh, is no longer around. So I wanted to do an updated video to see, hey, is it still worth it? And also, as I mentioned, make sure to stick around to the end. We'll talk about the specific situations and strategies in order to get the most out of this card. Before jumping into it, really quick mention that we're Uprise. We're a fintech company that puts together Wall Street level personalized financial plans completely free. And this is a lot of what we do. We scan the universe of credit cards and other financial products out there. Take a look at your specific situation to figure out exactly what you should be doing to get the most bang for your buck. Uh, and so to get your plan, definitely check us out. I've linked to us in the description below. Also make sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. It really, really helps small channels like ours. So getting back to it, uh, in this video, we're going to cover the sign-up bonus for the Chase Sapphire Preferred, the rewards, how they work on an ongoing basis, fees, uh, how easy it is to get, and lastly, what are those strategies for getting the most out of this card? All right, let's jump into it. Okay, so first up, sign-up bonus. So this card gives 60,000 bonus points after you spend $4,000 in the first three months after signing up. That's worth about $750, um, but I'll talk a little bit about how to juice that up even more uh, in a little bit. They change these sign-up bonuses decently frequently, so I'm logging here with you guys right now. We are filming this on February 16th, 2022, and the 60,000 is true as of today. Uh, and not that long ago, actually, so summer of last year, they were offering 80,000 points. They even upped that then to 100,000 points, but too bad. It seems to be over as of January this year. Uh, it's now back down to 60,000 points, which seems to be their standard. That said, 60,000 points, so $750 um, value is still a really good bonus. Um, a couple of similar cards, so the City Premier and the Capital One Venture Rewards cards, um, both of those are at $600 in value for their sign-up bonus. Okay, so taking a look at rewards. Um, a lot of the rewards for the Chase Sapphire cards are linked to the travel portal. So Chase has its own travel portal. It's kind of similar to Expedia. And in the past, when I've used it, um, it has a lot of the same um, selection and prices as you would find on those bigger travel comparison websites. So it's decently easy and, and good to use. So as I was saying, you get $50 in statement credit a year for a hotel stay that you book through the Chase Travel Portal. You also get five points per dollar for any travel that you book through that portal. Other than that, you get two points per dollar for other travel booked outside of that portal. Um, you get three points per dollar for dining, including takeout, delivery, etc. Uh, three points per dollar for um, groceries, three points per dollar for streaming services, and then one point per dollar for everything else. But the one thing I wanted to call out here for the rewards is that for most credit cards, each point or mile or whatever you want to call it is uh, worth one cent. But in the case of the Chase Sapphire Preferred, I'd say actually each point is worth 1.25 cents. There's a 25% multiplier on the value of each point. And the reason is because if you took those points and you were to buy travel on the Chase portal, as I mentioned, great selection, prices are equivalent, um, then each point is worth 1.25 cents. And so you should really like allocate all of your points towards travel. That's what makes this card make sense. So in terms of how these rewards compare, um, each of the similar cards have like slight nuances. So basically the city premiere, for example, gives you hundred dollars of value for towards a hotel instead of 50. Um, in addition, they have more three X point categories. So in addition to, um, supermarkets and dining out, um, those are, those are three X point categories, but they also have travel and gas as three X point categories as well. The Capital One Venture Rewards card gives you two miles per dollar on pretty much everything, five miles per dollar on um, any travel books through the Capital One portal, uh, and also no hotel credit, but they give you $100 um, towards, say, global entry if you needed it. So because of these differences, 
that's the fun part, right? Uh, it really depends on your spend, the biggest categories, future travel plans, whatever it is, oh, other card, credit cards in your wallet to really figure out how to optimize whether or not um, a particular card makes sense. Uh, we built a tool um, for this at Uprise. So you can definitely check us out. As I mentioned, I've linked to us in the description below. Uh, we do it completely for free. You could uh, feed in your spend and we can see, hey, which card makes sense. On fees, the Chase Sapphire Preferred has a $95 annual fee. Um, it's been that way as long as I can remember with this card. Uh, it's the same as the comparable card. So the other two cards that I mentioned, also $95 annual fee. Other than that, no foreign transaction fees and APRs between 15.99% and 22.99%, uh, depending on your credit. How easy is it to get? The Chase Sapphire Preferred is for people with pretty good credit. So I'd recommend having something in the high 600s and up uh, to make sure that you can qualify for this card. Okay, so last part, the fun part. I just shared with you guys all the details of the card, uh, but here's the strategy. So Chase cards, shine the most when they're paired with other Chase cards. So remember, I mentioned that the Chase Sapphire Preferred gets that 25% multiplier when you use your points towards travel via the Chase Travel Portal. Um, if you pair this card with other Chase cards, so for example, the Chase Freedom Unlimited or the Chase uh, Freedom Flex, these cards don't naturally get a 25% multiplier on their points, but Chase allows you to transfer points from other cards to the Chase Sapphire Preferred, which means that any points that you get with those other cards then also get a 25% multiplier when you transfer them over to the Chase Sapphire Preferred. It basically levels up all of those cards. So the coolest thing is that there's another thing you could do. So there's another Chase Sapphire card called the Chase Sapphire Reserve card. And the Chase Sapphire Reserve has a 50% multiplier instead of a 25% multiplier. It has a really high annual fee. And so you definitely have to do the math, see if your spend um, it like makes it pay off, if it's worth it. But at some point in the future, you get the Chase Sapphire Preferred now, at some point in the future, say you're traveling a bunch, it starts to make sense, then you can always call up Chase to upgrade your preferred to a reserve. You start paying that higher annual fee, but any points that you accrued while you had the Chase Sapphire Preferred and any points that you transferred over to that card, now all of them have a 50% bump instead of a 25% bump. As mentioned, definitely reach out to us if you want us to take a look at any of this stuff for you. And that's it. Those are my thoughts on the Chase Sapphire Preferred. Would love to hear what you think as well. Definitely let us know in the comments below. Also let us know, um, hey, are there other financial products that you're thinking about that you'd like us to do a review video on? Uh, we're doing a series of these review videos. Um, so if you wanna check out another one that we recently did on Vanguard Digital Advisor, uh, you can check that out up here. Also, if you'd like more support with personal finance, definitely check out Uprise. Um, the link's in the description below. Uh, we put together Wall Street level personalized financial plans completely and 100% for free. And so any questions you have about your finances, whether it's credit cards or just anything, uh, budgeting, um, how to navigate employer benefits, how much you should be saving for retirement, things like that, uh, we're happy to help. And on average, we put 100K in net worth back into people's pockets. Other than that, if you'd like to see more videos like this one, please give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and click the bell for notifications. See you guys next time.